first day on MNL was, um, yeah, I remember driving over the uh, M62 from Manchester because that's where I was living at the time. And I just remember on that journey thinking, oh my gosh, I'm going to be one of the Dingles. Do you know what I mean? Because they were such an iconic family. Uh, and, you know, there was Zach, there was Sam, there was Butch, you know, there was Mandy, there was Lisa, there was all these many different, there was Marlon, there was so many different um, Dingles and it was like, I'm going to be part of this kind of iconic family, this is bizarre. And then I remember coming up to the village and driving down the track to the village and I'm a bit of a nature kind of square so I was just marvelling at the, the kind of birds and the, the, the deer and everything along the track. And then I got to like the, the Dingle set, that's where my first scene was and I was shooting it with James Hooton and you know who plays Sam and he'd been away for a few years so it was Jim's first day back as well and we were kind of brothers uh, and we've never done scenes before and I just remember you know when we did the first line run and Jim was just oh yeah how are you doing how's that his knots accent and then he snapped into Sam and I was like oh my goodness this guy is amazing and it was just like this you're nothing you know you obviously know but Sam is a character but he, he just blew me away and I was having to do the scene with him and Jim was just being brilliant in it and I meant to be really nasty but inside I was like excited, nervous um, and just trying to hold it together to make sure that the scene worked. I did six years and I left the show and I, and it was this kind of story with um, Patsy Kenzie's character yes. and um, we kind of double cross the kings and, and, and get millions of pounds from them and then we were to fly off in an aeroplane and, and, and steal the money and that was the kind of the big thing that the big storyline that we'd been given to, to leave the show but then at right at the end Kane kind of double crosses Sadie and kind of pushes her out of the plane and then just flies off so then we had to do this flyover in the with me a shot of me in, in the plane and then some shots on the ground flying over the dingles and to have done six years in this brilliant show and then have to to have to see this beautiful countryside that I've been working on from an aerial view was like it, it was like the best way to finish my kind of first six years on Emmerdale. There's a memory that uh, funniest on screen I don't know if you, you won't have seen it on screen but there was a, there was a scene once at the back of Debbie's house with <laughs> with Charlie Webb, Emma Atkins and myself. And it was the last scene of the day, it was a Friday. Everybody's had a busy week, everybody's tired. And for some reason, sometimes actors corpse, and which means we laugh. So we laugh and we get giddy. And once you start laughing, you can't stop laughing. So um, between the three of us, because we all were setting each other off, we would literally, you know, so it's okay, it's okay, I'll, find, I'll be fine in a minute, just give me a minute. And then you'd kind of try and compose yourself and look up and I'd look at Charlie and she'd just be like crying. And Emma would be doing the same. And then the director came on set because he was, you know, he was like, we weren't mucking about. It's like, you can't stop yourself. And then once he, he was a bit school teachery and quite rightly, because he was kind of saying, right, okay, come on, let's get this done now. Um, but the more he did that, the more we laugh like really naughty school children. There was a, a great scene here in the pub um, that was uh, at the end of Kane had, um, it was when Kane got bludgeoned by uh, Zach and he's kind of, he's, he's done things to Amy, he's done things to Jay, he, he just, he's hating everybody in the village and he comes into the pub and, and, and they're all, everybody's staring at him and it's a bit like a kind of western, he comes through the door there and everybody, I think people just don't want to speak to him. And then one by one, he picks off people in the bar and says, you're this, you're, I mean, I think he even has a go at Edna's hat. You know what I mean? It's as ridiculous as that, but it was a, a really well written scene. And um, I really enjoyed doing that. That was a really kind of memorable moment. The Kane and Faith flashback episode was a really special episode because what I liked about it was you got to see the history of Kane and Charles and Faith and why and Shadrach and why he kind of became the person he was because Faith walked out and him and 
jazz when they were 10 years old and their father or what he thought Chad was his father at the time but he was definitely Chaz's father he's beating them up and the mother leaves them but she's also thinking about herself as well so it's a, it's a really it explains an awful lot and it was a really lovely episode to do really well written I love working with Sally Dexter I love it to pieces she's just absolutely brilliant um, so that was a lovely episode to do I loved the live episode I thought the live episode was a really special uh, piece for, for us as a whole company because everybody everybody on that floor from you know from from the, 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 the boom guys to the camera guys to the makeup girls to to the props department everybody had to be was involved and it was the camaraderie between us as a company then was just so good um, you know you could see you know because the boom guys are not wanting to drop that that mic and now if they do if we do that every day or if we fluff a line it's like okay we'll go again but some of the boom guys are going oh my god that I'm really sweating you know because it's it's nerve-wracking but we we rehearsed it within an inch of its life and it went really well and you know the sense of euphoria as a company that we had after doing that episode was really special and I, that's a special time as well final thing that i remember that i really liked doing which was a real challenge i didn't think it was going to be until i went and did my diving practice or diving training was the underwater stuff with natalie uh, so with with kane and nate and moira on the lake and then they end up under, under the water i remember going to leeds and being I had never used a regulator before, so I love snorkeling. Went into this Leeds pool, went under, mask on, yeah, great, take the regulator out, hold your breath, yeah, okay, put the regulator back in, yeah, great, this is all good. Going a bit deeper, yeah, fine, do that again. Okay, right, let's take the mask off now because you're not going to be wearing a mask doing the thing. As soon as I took the mask off, for me, everything got really claustrophobic. I couldn't see because it just went suddenly full blurred vision. And I just remember kind of like, taking the regulator out and thinking, can't see anything. I'm feeling really claustrophobic. This is really quite stressful. And I bobbed up to the top and the diving instructor came and he was like, is everything all right? I'm like, yeah, it's fine, it's fine. I just, I just, you know, made me feel a bit panicky, that. And uh, he went, no, you'll be fine. So anyway, we had a couple more sessions, it was fine. But I was quite nervous going into that, that tank. Um, but Natalie told me about this book, which I've never read. I think I got it on an audio book and it's called, but the phrase sticks with me, which is feel the fear and do it anyway. And, um, and I, I went, the day we, we did it, the first take, I did it, I went down and you you were about 20 feet down on this, on this little thing in this big pool in, in, um, in London, uh, Basildon it was, we were, and, um, I thought I'm not going to wear the mask because I was going to maybe take the mask off at the bottom. I thought I've just got to get used to this. The pool was really warm, so that was nice. You, you weren't cold or anything. And you go in the first time I went down, it's just like all I can hear is the breathing inside, and it's nice and calm. And I'm going down, I'm floating down, and I can, and I'm with the diver who's taking me down. I've got a weight belt on to keep me down there on this platform that Natalie was on. Natalie's down there with the regulator, and I can see her give him just about blurred, and then. I can hear it on the mic, uh, Rachel's kind of talking. Um, she's the first assistant director and it's really clear under the water, which is bizarre, but sound travels under the water really well. So you can hear just slightly like she's at a bus stop or you know, she's like, I don't know, like at an airport or, yeah, so we're just getting uh, Jeff into position now at the moment. And it's just like, okay, so going down. Then I, I went down and then I started to grab onto Natalie's leg, which is what they wanted to do was the beginning of the shot, trying to get me in position, but because you're naturally trying to float up. My body was floating up, my breathing suddenly changing from calm. And now all I can hear is And I'm thinking, oh my God, I can't do this, I can't do this. And I just remember that feel of fear and do it anyway. Held on to that, got myself into position, heard action, did the take. Then I went, I went to the top when we finished that take. Once I'd done that, I was like, okay, I've done it now. There's nothing to be scared of here. And once I'd done that, it became one of the best shoots I've ever done. And the sense of achievement at the end of it was amazing. I think Nat and I would both agree on that. It was a really fun thing to do. Uh, and uh, yeah, that was a scary, but you know, like real pat on the back moment for me.
I think what people love about Kane, I think why they appeal, he appeals to, to the viewers is, uh, I think people tend to like, uh, you know, a, a, a villain, a baddie, and they like the kind of underdog, which I think the, the Dingles are as, as a family there. They, they're certainly the, the lower rung of the ladders in, in the kind of social spectrum in, in Emmerdale. And I, it's that it's that old adage, isn't it, that you, that it was in the six. I've said it before. Um, it used to be, would you prefer your daughters to date a Beatle or a Rolling Stone? And everybody chose the Rolling Stones because the Beatles were a bit too squeaky clean. Yeah, no, I mean, what they 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 wrote that story really well. They kind of who who got Kane, um, and there was so many suspects, and I think they that that nobody was expecting it to be Zach. But he was doing it to protect other people of his son because his son was out of control, um, and then that spurred another storyline for Steve and I, and we got to do this brilliant two-hander episode where, you know, it was like hearts on the table, kind of um, just being honest and open with each other about our relationship. I love being a Dingle um, because I mean, every one of the family, they're, they're all very rounded and fun and brilliant characters but you know with that also it's this, the, the actor behind each one also is a lot of fun in their own rights and, and all kind of we all kind of have a real laugh on set when this kind of dingle family scenes it's always a little bit i'm sure sometimes they have to kind of quiet us down a bit on set because we all get a wee bit giddy um and the some of my earliest memories of very early memories of like breakfast scenes at the Dingles, which was, which was mayhem, and there was just toast and sausages and bacon, and I'm sure I put on a stone in my first kind of six months at Emmerdale because I was just, you know, because obviously Kane, being the character that he is, he's like wolfing things down. So if you're doing six takes, you're like, I think I've had about six sausages. Um, but I do remember one take. I mean, this is Lisa Riley. She's she is very very funny and very cheeky. But her and Jim just, I was quite new, and they kind of were just about getting ready to roll up, and just before we're about to do do a take, Lisa leans over to Jim, puts a massive splodge of tomato sauce on his face, and then they shout action, and I was like, and they were just straight straight in, and I was going, oh my gosh, this is this is really crazy. What's going on? But it was brilliant. And it kind of that that mayhem that of fun that we were having before, I think, got translates and moves into the scene. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So it was um, fun times. I just like the fact that I think the older he's getting, certainly when I came back after that that few years out, the layers to the character, the fact that they stopped him being this kind of like lone shark or you know lone operator who lived at the top of the dingers who didn't have any friends when i came back um they integrated him into the village he started to work at the garage he became less two-dimensional more more of a, a believable kind of character and who would speak to who began to have friends in the village you know and i think that was really interesting then the history behind it even the three years that i'd been out they'd written a history of the the writers had written history of that, so the layers to the character became more and more. And and now with all these brilliant characters that he's interacted with over the years, there's so much history. Storyline that there's two storylines that I just wish I'd have been in. Uh, one of them I, I maybe could have been in, but I don't know whether I've been in the underwater. The underwater stuff in the pub I thought was really good. Um, I'd booked a holiday and I couldn't be used in that storyline, so I think it was they did a couple of scenes of me at some. I mean, it was a, it was a. It was a hotel somewhere in Yorkshire, but it was meant I was meant to be in France, and I was like literally eating a baguette, and it was like on the phone, "What was happened?" And then I kind of had to fly home. So I, I, I watched that episode. It's shot by Duncan Foster. And I was like, "Oh my gosh, that is amazing!" You know, and Mark and Charlie and Lucy and and um, and uh, Dom were all, you know, doing this brilliant stuff, and it was exciting to watch and at the end of you know each half you're like oh my gosh what's happening next you really wanted to know what's going on so that was brilliant and then the other one which i think is probably the best week of emmerdale 
I've ever watched, and I wasn't in any of it, um, which is not a bad thing, um, was the Hot Bypass. That I, every night where we just got to the same point between whatever characters were featured in that episode all came to them coming to this car crash. And it was really clever storytelling, really beautifully shot. And then that final thing got at the at, at the end, it was it was really exciting television, and, and I was really proud to be part of the show, even though I wasn't in that particular. For me, what I love most about Emmerdale, the crew, I love the people who work in this building. Um, I have great laughs. The people who I work with, in terms of in front of the camera, we have such fun. I've got a really close set of friends here and I've made a really close set of friends um, throughout my time here who will be friends for life. And um, the village, the, the, the countryside, the Yorkshire Dales, you know, the Yorkshire itself, that's, that's what I've fallen in love with um, and that's what keeps me enjoying this show and, and keeps me really happy.